In this lecture, we are going to connect MetaMask with our JavaScript file and Web3. So join me in our code editor. We are going to create a new file called index.js. In here, we are going to add an event listener to our document, so just to our website. We're going to listen for when the content of the site has been loaded. So DOM content loaded. We're going to have a function that takes in the event and then performs some action when the document object model has been loaded, all of the HTML elements. In here, we are going to connect to the blockchain. So we're going to check if window.ethereum is true. If window.ethereum is true, it means that the current window has an Ethereum connection, and we can get that via MetaMask. Otherwise, if window.ethereum is false, then we want to log out an error that says install MetaMask, because the website won't work without some kind of connection. Okay, if window.ethereum is true, then we can ask MetaMask's permissions to access all of the accounts in MetaMask and set the default account. So we're going to call ethereum.request and the method is going to be the eth underscore request accounts because we're, we are requesting accounts from MetaMask. We can append then to perform some action. What we're going to do is use document.getElement by ID of count and we're going to click on it. So that just means we're going into the HTML element and grabbing this span element that has the ID account. And we are going to click on it to then trigger the count to either increase or decrease. But we also have to catch any potential errors. Just as best practice, we can call console.error and log out the error message if it exists. So if there were any problems with getting an account, then we'll log out that error. Next, we have to handle network changes. So we're going to call ethereum.on chain changed, which means that in MetaMask, the network has changed. For example, it could be mainnet to local to Robston to Rinkby, some kind of change. If there is a change, we want to call window.location.reload to refresh the page. And we also want to check if the account has been changed in MetaMask. We have to handle that as well. So we can call ethereum.onAccountsChanged. Just make sure that you spell these correct because they are pre-built listeners. Here we're going to take in the accounts and have this callback. We're going to check if accounts.length is greater than zero. Then we can just use the first account. So we can call console.log using account and then pass in with a formatted string, in which case we do have to replace the quotation marks with these backticks if we want to put in a formatted string. And we can just pass in the accounts at index zero. So that will just get the first account, the account at the top of the list, and use that one. Otherwise, if accounts.length is zero, then we can call console.error and say zero accounts. All right, so that is going to handle an account change inside of MetaMask. Next, we have to listen for messages from MetaMask. So we can call ethereum.onMessage. So this will be able to listen for any time that MetaMask sends a message. Then we can grab that message and perform some action, like we can just log out the message. Just make sure you spell all these correctly. Then we can subscribe to the provider connection. So we'll call ethereum.onConnect. We will take in some info and here have a callback function. We can call console.log connected to network and then we can pass in again as a formatted string or we could just add it in a comma if you want to use a formatted string then just use those back ticks and then pass in here with the dollar sign in curly brackets the 
info. You want to have a lot of logs so that way you can see what's happening at each step of your website. All right, we also have to handle provider disconnections. So we'll call ethereum.on and this time disconnect. And we'll be able to grab an error and call console.log. And then we can, again, use that formatted string, disconnected from network, and then pass in the error. So if there was any kind of message sent during disconnection, we'll be able to see that. Next up, we are going to set up our provider and our smart contract. So I'm going to create a const provider and use my ethers JS library. We can get its providers.web3 provider window.ethereum. So that allows us to grab our MetaMask provider. Then we'll have a signer, which we grab with provider.get signer. And that's a function. Then if we want to create a contract, we can use new ethers dot contract with the capital C. And here we have to pass in an address, an ABI, and a signer. So the signer we already have, but we also need the address and the ABI. So let's start with the address. We're going to just define that at the top of the file. Const address, you put this into a string. This address should be the address of the smart contract that you deployed to your local network. And it has to be the contract address for your custom smart contract, not for migrations. So just copy that and then paste it into the string. Note that if you close Ganache or you close your terminal, you may have to redeploy the contracts and get this address again, which will be a new address. Because remember, the local blockchain is temporary. It doesn't exist forever. Okay, so we have our contract address. We also need our ABI from the contract. This is going to be a list. So you can actually get this by going into your build and then going into the JSON file for your custom contract. Here you'll have a key called ABI in this object. And this is a list, so you want to copy that entire list. So I'm just going to copy this, and then I'm going to paste it here into the ABI. And notice that this should not be inside of any kind of quotation marks. This should just be a list. You can also grab it directly from the JSON file. If you want to access it, you just have to access the JSON file and then get the value at that property. So it's up to you if you want to reference it via the file or just paste it in. Be careful with pasting it in because if you make a change to the contract and then you recompile the contract and redeploy the contract, the JSON file will change. So you'll have to copy the ABI again if there is a change to it. For example, if I change the name of my method increase to increase count, well, then that's going to change the ABI because the ABI has a list of the methods, as you can see here. So you have to make sure that if you recompile a contract that you get the correct updated ABI as well. Every time you compile, you'll get a new ABI if you change something like a function name. So just be aware of that. Okay, so now we have our address and our ABI. So this is how we can connect to MetaMask with our JavaScript file. Now coming up next, we're going to put the smart contract to use. We're going to use the contract to emit events. So every time the user wants to increase or decrease the tally, they'll have to perform a transaction with the smart contract. And only then can we update the count if they have successfully managed to interact with the smart contract. So join me in the next lecture where we will implement the functionality where a user can interact with our smart contract via the web.
Do you want the source code? Well, go to the description box. It is right there. Also, click the link in the description box to join the Mammoth Unlimited membership to get 2,000 hours of content. And like, subscribe, and comment below.